So you want to make a cheap, easy knife grinding jig that's not a piece of crap. Done. Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. So I get a lot of viewers who are interested in making a knife grinding jig to help them grind better bevels on their knives. They want it to be cheap, they want it to be easy to make, and they obviously want it to work well. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. All right, let's jump right on into it. Hey, whoa, hold on. Before I make this thing, there's actually a logic to how this particular design works and why it works the way it does. So uh, before I, you know, before I start actually making the thing, uh, let me blather on a little bit about, you know, the design considerations, what it is I'm actually setting out to accomplish, and so on. Now look, I know a lot of you guys want to jump right into the build, so right there, jump to that, and you can go ahead and watch me make it. Um, in fairness, I'm really going to get pretty deep into the weeds of explaining why it's designed the way that it is. So here's the finished jig, more or less finished, mechanically finished. Uh, you know, I'll pretty it up a little bit, but functionally it does everything it's supposed to do at this point. So let me talk first about what the purpose of a jig is. The most basic justification for a jig is that it helps you set a nice, clean, predictable angle and grind fairly clean and predictable bevels. Freehand grinding is one of the hardest skills to acquire in knife making. And uh, this is a good way of kind of getting your sea legs as you learn how to use a belt grinder. Um, beyond that, jigs can be very useful for production guys too. It allows you to speed things up. It absorbs some of the heat of the, uh, that's generated during uh, grinding. And as a result, you can make more blades faster by using jigs. Now this one is designed intentionally for three specific purposes and this is not really the way I would make one for myself because I've you know got a nice fancy shop here with mills and all kinds of stuff. What I wanted to do here was to make something that was really simple to use, really simple to make, and really cheap to make. So let's talk just a little about how it actually works. Basically you just drop the knife in here. You want it to register on these little screws and uh, then take a welding clamp thusly and you can start grinding very very simple to use you want to flip it around you just grab it take it off put it on the other side there goes the other one simple some designs you'll see on on youtube or whatever have uh, this front plate ground uh, or uh, drilled so that you have a whole ton of little matrix of drill holes and you can put different sizes and shapes of blades on there and you just have to screw them on through the tang. Now the disadvantage of that and it holds them on nice and firmly no doubt about that but the problem is that every time you have to switch back and forth you're going to undo those screws and then look at your blade and then screw it back on and just a little bit of a headache. The whole point of most normal kinds of jigs is that you're trying to set an accurate and repeatable angle for this bevel. You know, to get all that stuff working right, you want to have it at exactly the same angle. And ideally, that way you can flip it around and you'll grind exactly the same amount off of the back as you do off the front, and then you'll have a nice symmetrical uh, bevel. So you can make a non-adjustable one, but the idea of this is that you can adjust it by turning these little adjusting screws right here. Now some designs that you'll see have a single screw right here. Now there's a big advantage to that. If you have one screw, then it's only bearing in essence in three places here here and here and that adjustment is really simple to make here you have to match these two so that they get exactly the same here you'll notice that these are not exactly the same length 
and now it rocks and that's terrible so you don't want that but it's, this is where these little wing nuts come in basically you get your angle established correctly with one of these tighten up that wing nut and then you can start to adjust the other one and you just feel is it rocking okay I need to turn it just a hair more Now I've taken all the play out of it, tighten that one up, and it's nice and rigid, and it's bearing on all four of those points of contact, and you get a really nice, stable surface, but without the problem that you'll have if you have a single one, which is that it can always rock towards these corners here if you're basically sitting on a three-pointed three stool or three-legged stool. You'll notice that these screws are brass. The reason for that is, of course, we got a mild steel table here, and if I put hardened steel screws in here, they're going to scratch up this table. I don't care about that from an aesthetic standpoint, but if I'm going back and forth and back and forth every day, hours and hours a day, these things are going to scratch big, a uh, big gully down here. And that's going to cause the thing to want to follow this little track and start to mess up the accuracy of my grind. One last point uh, I would make is that um, some designs you'll see are, are made so that they kind of hike up the, uh, the blade so that it's, it's way up here. Basically, the further you get from this axis, the more that vibration in this system is imparted to the jig here the more that it's going to bounce the more that you get belt bounce imparted into the blade the more that you get chatter imparted into the blade harder it is to be accurate and uh, so what you really want is for this to be as low as humanly possible if I were making this you know for myself probably I would use all my fancy tools and I would mill this out so there's a little shelf here and this would rest all the way down as you know as close to that corner as possible and that is about it for the design so let's shoot on over to the shop and we'll start making this thing so here's what we're using a 3 16 by one and a half inch angle iron some quarter 20 screws some 632 screws and some wing nuts period I bought all the materials at Home Depot for under 50 bucks. We'll begin by cutting the angle iron. I'm using an abrasive chop saw here, but you could do it with a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder or a hacksaw, whatever works for you. As I alluded earlier, I've got plenty of fancy tools that I can use here, but I'm aiming to show you how you can do this with really simple tools that pretty much everybody has. First, I'll flatten what will be the front and bottom faces of the jig on my grinder. Next, I'll use layout fluid to scribe some lines to lay out where various holes will be drilled. Then I'll use a prick punch and then a center punch to set the locations of the holes. Now I'll drill the holes for the angle adjustment screws. I'm using number seven drill bits. That's 201 thousandths of an inch, not a standard fractional drill. These are the standard size used for tapping quarter 20 screws. Now look, if you don't have a number seven drill, you can get away with using fractional size drills like you would find at Lowe's, but you're better off using the correct size. 
For the purposes of illustration, I'm drilling these by hand. If you have a drill press, by all means use your drill press. Now I'll tap these using a straight flute hand tap. So a quick note on tapping. Tapping can be very frustrating. If you have any better way of tapping than what I'm showing right here, absolutely do it that way. This is by far the worst way of tapping anything. I'm just showing it to show that it can be done. But the more you can do to assure that the tap enters nice and straight, the better. This isn't the place for a seminar on tapping, but I'll give you one hint. Always buy two taps and two drills. Why? Because if you only have one tap, modern science has shown there's an 87% chance you'll break it. And then you're driving to freaking Home Depot again. Now I'll drill the holes for the support ledge screws on the front of the jig using a number 36 drill, the appropriate size for 632 machine screws. Notice there's a rounded internal corner or fillet here. You want your holes drilled as low as you can get them, but you don't want your holes drilled so low that they exit halfway into that fillet. Here's why. When the point of that drill comes out into the fillet, there's an unequal stress on the drill as it exits. And as you can see, that can cause problems. So just to show you another way, using a mill or a drill press is way preferable and much less stress on small drill bits. I'm doing this on my mill, but even a really cheap drill press is much preferable to doing it with a hand drill. I've moved that whole location up slightly on the face of the jig so that the drill exits on the flat, not halfway into that fillet where it's going to be unequally stressed as it exits. So let me just jump in here to mention that I'll be posting the plans for this project on my page on Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Walter Sorrels. Uh, they'll be they'll be available to anybody who kicks in, you know, just a couple shekels to support me on Patreon. Doesn't matter how big or small the uh, the donation is. So aside from the feeling of well-being and contentment that comes with uh, helping me out on the channel, you'll also find tons of my plans, uh, all these different builds on Patreon. Um, so thanks as always to all my Patreon supporters, and let's jump on back into the work. So now we'll tap those holes. Again, we can hand tap them with a straight flute tap from Home Depot if we want. But here's something that works way better, a spiral flute tap. I bought mine from Granger or MSC or someplace like that. So unless you live in a major city that has a big industrial supply place around, you may have to plan ahead and order them on the internet if you want to go this route. Now spiral flute taps are really at their best when run on CNC machines and specialized tapping equipment and so on. But guess what? You can press them into service on your good old hand drill. And in my experience they work much better than straight flute taps. Now do your best to make sure they're going in straight. Key point, don't try to muscle them. Let the drill kind of float in your hand so the drill follows the tap. Also, if your drill has a clutch, set it really low so that it won't overpower the tool. And use tapping fluid, or at least some 3-in-1 oil, and you have a good chance for success. Now I'm screwing in these 632 stainless steel screws, which will form the little ledge that your blade sits on when you're grinding. Use a drill if you want, but make sure to hand crank them that last half turn. You don't ever want them backing out. Now the brass quarter 20 angle adjustment screws. Put the wing nuts on in the right direction, you dummy. Now 
and that's that. Now I'll use a file to level them so that all four of them form a nice clean level contact surface. It's a firm guarantee that they won't be level when you first install them and you want this tool to be accurate as possible. If these things aren't lined up perfectly you'll have trouble repeating anything with them either from side to side or blade to blade. I'm using a ruler and digital calipers to make sure that they're both level and flat which are not the same thing. In other words you want them all in a row, but you also want to make sure that that row is not cockeyed, that it's absolutely parallel with the base of the jig. And that's it. I've already showed how to set it up, but here's a quick demo of the tool being used. So I really like this build because, you know, it shows you that you don't need a bunch of crazy expensive tools and a PhD in metallurgy to make knives. A lot of the tools that I use in my shop day in and day out are just like this one. They're simple, they're cheap, they're easy to make, but they're really effective. So what could be better than that? Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamones or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamones as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!